Hi, I'm Andrew Holzman of Family Tree Counseling Associates. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Carmel, Indiana. I have 30 plus years of experience and I'm available for individuals or couples in person or at a Holzman, H-O-L-Z-M-A-N-2 at Comcast.net or 317-457-8668. Thank you. Um, I'm entitling this video blog Trust and Fear. And trust and fear, fear and trust are polar opposites for a relationship. It would be a rare client who comes into my office and does not talk about having some kind of trust issues. Trust issues are like the third rail of relationships. Everyone seems to talk about them, seems to have them. Other than talking about communication issues, trust seems to be a major factor in people's dissatisfaction in their relationship. Now, trust, of course, can be very big issues, such as being betrayed or being cheated on. It can also be smaller issues. So I want to talk about that a little bit. And so why fear? Well, fear to me seems to be the opposite of trust, that you're scared of not being understood. You're, you're fearful of being betrayed or not being heard or not being cared about or being abandoned. So, or even fear of being hurt emotionally or physically. Hurt and pain and fear, fear comes from not being able to think that the person that you're with is trustworthy in certain aspects. Trust is a difficult concept. It entails surrender of your worries and the habits that have been a protection your whole life and a comfort for your whole life. Fear protects us from being too exposed and too um, vulnerable, it but it also limits our ability to move and to grow and to change and to be happy. Uh, fear keeps a person stuck, rigid, and a lot of times unaware of unhealthy patterns. So in a relationship, in any relationship, we invite someone into our life and we hope, we sometimes magically we're hoping that they're going to be this person who's going to be totally the person who's trustworthy and cares about us and takes care of us and is there for us and is supportive of us. We wonderful, of course. They're going to know our whims and our needs and they're going to, how, depending on how you see a relationship, of course. But of course, in some ways, everyone wants this great relationship where there's trust and there's safety and there's care and there's love. That wouldn't be too much of a stretch to think. The out, realizing that we affect the outcome is even more important in a relationship than the hope that the person is going to be this magically perfect person. What I mean by that is we are inviting that person into our life. We have certain aspects and certain characteristics that make that person feel comfortable for us and make that person feel comfortable with us. So we have some control and some responsibility in this, other than putting all the onus on the other person. It's a lot easier and kind of a bigger deal to understand trust and fear if your partner has cheated on you. Now, if your partner has cheated you or has led you to the brink of financial ruin, those are big deals. Divorced parents, abuses, loss, loss of a parent, loss of family, unhealthy relationships in your past or in your family, they seem to kind of stick with us and they stick with us in ways that when we're hurt and when we're abandoned and when we're cheated on or when betrayed in some way or hurt in some way that and that trust is sundered and that trust is destroyed those old patterns and those old fears and those old hurts just stay in us. And they're there for, they get brought up. They're there for the plucking. They just kind of come up. It's like we, no time at all has changed from when our parents got divorced when we were eight or when, some, when we lost a parent at a certain age. We're just going to feel that loss and that pain just as strongly again. And I see that with clients. I see if there's a, a loss or there's a cheating um, issue involved, 
that that old stuff just kind of comes up and the person is right back there again and they don't have any ability to differentiate between now and then a lot of the times. In big issues such as betrayal or abandonment, it is hard but not impossible to heal the damage. Betrayal such as having an extramarital affair digs up those past and those family of origin issues and those hurts and those fears and working it through takes commitment on both parties in the relationship especially the person who has cheated they have to be very humble and very committed to being responsible to the other person but the person who has been cheated on has to also do some work they have to focus on how they're going to get through this because they're going to be in a lot of pain for quite a few months or quite a long time and of course there are other factors when you've been cheated on there's family there's kids there's you know your history together there's your relationship some people can just leave the relationship and other people do not choose to do that and a lot of the times when there's been that kind of affair or betrayal people can stick together and work it out but it does take commitment on the part of the person who was cheated on as well they have to look at themselves they have to look at their patterns they have to look at what enabled this to happen sometimes if they've pulled away and they've not paid attention to the relationship because of work or because of kids or because of other factors they've left themselves open to to forms of hurt it's not their fault in other words you didn't cause your partner to cheat that is not my point at all but you do contribute to who you pick and are they really trustworthy or are you playing out some family issue or other scenario that you're not aware of and how quickly you re recover and demand a better relationship either with the person who you're with or a, a future partner so you have some responsibility if you realize well this is kind of my pattern i've had many relationships and i've always gotten cheated on or I've always been abandoned, or I've always been betrayed, then there's something to look at in terms of yourself, because it's not just that everyone out there is terrible. So this is part of it as well. You don't choose to have this kind of pain if you're a healthy person, but you might pick certain people who have certain characteristics. And if you don't look at that, and you're not aware of that, then you'll keep on replaying that scenario. And that might have a lot to do with family of origin that might have a lot to do with what you lived through so if you are a woman and you were as as sometimes I hear you were told that your only ability is to be attractive and to be and to um, bring a mate into your life and that is your sole way of looking at yourself even though you know that's not right then that's going to be a your work to play with that issue to kind of deal with that issue that's inside of you. Most issues of trust, though, really are day-to-day -day problems. So in day-to-day -day life, trust issues get pushed up by small things. A, a partner who forgets what you've told them, um, a partner who doesn't finish a task that you both agreed on that they would finish. These are very common irritants, and they lead to many arguments. Is it possible to trust someone who's a disappointment, who doesn't listen enough? Arguments start over one person being different than the other, having a different focus or a different pattern to how things are done. People are different, of course, and, and they're going to see things in a different way, and they're going to take care of themselves in a different way. You might be married to someone who does things a lot slower than you, or someone who does things a lot quicker than you, someone who's impulsive. Again, you brought this person into your life. This is what was interesting and exciting and new to you or was maybe like one of your parents in your family in some way but whatever it is they're going to be different than you and it certainly is irritating to have somebody who you're living with who does things different and they're going to bring up feelings for you they're not going to do it the way you want them to do it they're not going to do it at the speed you want them to do it they're going to talk too much or they're going to talk too little they're going to follow through in certain ways or not follow through in certain ways. They're going to be anxiety provoking. They're going to want to show up early or they're never going to show up on time. There, there's lots of things that people 
deal with in relationships that bring up feelings. Well, uh, what do you do with that? From little acorns do mighty oaks grow, it has been said. These little, little disagreements lead to a continuous state of discomfort and mistrust, and, and mistrust rather, for some people. If you live with someone who doesn't seem to care what you care about, then that's a bigger issue than just a person who doesn't follow through in lots of ways. I mean, really, that's the issue. The issue is, if you're saying something and the person just doesn't seem to care about what you're saying, that it's really important for you to be on time and that person is always late. Well, they may have their issues or their excuses for being late, but do you talk about, if, if it's your issue, do you talk about what it brings up for you? what you feel when you're late, what anxiety gets brought up, how you're, what, are you, what are you going through? Are you talking about the deeper issues for this? And I think that's the big deal here. The big deal here is not the issue of the moment. So many people argue about the who, what, where, when of the moment. And those issues, while they're important and while they matter, don't get to the key point of all of this. The key point of all of this is, if you're going to have an intimate relationship, if you're gonna be comfortable in your relationship, then there has to be a level of trust, a level of safety, a level of where you're talking about, you're opening up these things, these issues, these feelings that confound you and bring up old stuff. So that's the information piece of this, to understand to be aware, okay, it's not just about disappointing people when I'm late, it really brings up some strong feelings for me. And what's that about? Where's that coming from? Really brings up some strong feelings when my partner drives too fast or drives too slow or doesn't follow through with something or doesn't listen to what I'm talking about and feeling unheard and feeling uncared about in that way is a big deal. And is that talked about? Well, if it is, then the conversation changes. It's not about the little thing that we're talking about, whatever that is. And those little things, of course, matter and they build up. But there's really what I'm talking about is an intimacy, a connection, a deeper connection that if you can talk about who you are and why these things matter to you and give your partner a sense of who you are and why you care about these things, then I believe those little issues get resolved a lot quicker. There won't be the competition as opposed to the he said, she said, or, well, I like to do this. No, I like to do that. Or, you know, it's, it's not that place where people are just banging up against each other. It's really hearing that this matters to you. This brings up feelings. This has a deeper sense and not everything has such a deep sense, but it, but certain things really matter and people tend to argue about the same things and argue about what they're going through. So maybe you feel nagged because the other person is always telling you you're doing something wrong and you're then you get resistant. Or maybe you feel unheard, so then you feel like you have to raise your voice so the person will hear you. And those two kind of cancel each other out. And you're not really talking about what's going on inside. So there are no obvious or easy answers to these issues and they're, they're long-term issues. But if you work on talking about your feelings, your fears, your anxieties, the things that can lead to mistrust and pain and fear, then the, the conversation changes. And if the conversation changes and there's more intimacy and there's more closeness and there's more safety, then there's less fear. There's less fear and there's less anxiety. So trust is doable, even with big issues. I've seen it happen. I've seen folks where there's been an affair or there's been a betrayal where they work it out, but they have to change. Both of them have to change how they're looking at that. And with the little ones, little issues, that is, that is a little harder in some ways because it's not as obvious, but, they, but it has the same origin. It has what goes on inside. How do we talk about what goes on inside? and get that person to hear 
the, your partner, that is, get them to hear what you care about and why you care about it, as opposed to it's just an order or a bossing of somebody around or resistance and ignoring. So anyway, thank you for listening. That is the trust and fear video for today. My name is Andrew Holzman, H-O-L-Z-M-A-N. As I said, 317-457-8668, aholzman2 at comcast.net. Again, thank you for listening and bye-bye.